Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. If this is your first time here, go ahead and take a look around and check out some of my other videos. I do a video a week on the buildup of my K5 Blazer and all the projects and fabrication that goes into it. Today, we are dealing with my intake, with my cold air intake to be exact. The one I have had in there since the beginning is awful. It doesn't work, it's mounted improperly, the filter's fallen off before. I'm gonna fix all that. So let's jump to it, Barracks Garage. Here is the old setup that I use. As you can see, it was just a bunch of connectors and sleeves. None of this is beaded. It was all held on kind of wonky. You can see on there where it was rubbing. I mean, oh, it worked, but I'm not gonna say it was good. Now, this, this works, looks good, and it's gonna help the truck a ton. My cold air intake on my truck has been a joke for years. It was tied on with webbing for, shoot, probably the past two years. I had problems when I first started the build because I couldn't get the mass airflow to read properly because it was getting turbulent air. It rattled, it was, it was, it was terrible. So I knew that that was part of uh, this section of the build that I really needed to address. So I started looking for options out there and they're pretty slim unless you wanna go a full custom route. If you have a factory vehicle, putting in a factory airbox is, is not a big deal. There's tons of companies out there that will build a custom air intake for your Mustang, your Ford, your Chevy, your Dodge. But when you have a custom vehicle with a custom engine and all the stuff that goes with it, that option isn't available to you. I was cruising on the Holly website and came across their builder kit for their cold air intake. And it just, it clicked. It has all the pieces that I needed. It has all the fittings that are required and it gives you tons of customization as you put it together. They make a air intake kit that is fully customizable that comes with all the fittings that you might need and all the adapters, elbows, couplers, joints, and an air filter and tubing to top it off. This is the tubing they supply. As you can see, you got a bunch of 45s, you got some 90s, you got straights. You got enough to make quite a few kits. In fact, I'm probably gonna use the excess to build like a snorkel or something for when I go four wheeling up in four dice. But this is the guy right here. I've already measured what I need to do to cut. I'm going to be making some cuts right in here to get my length out and then mount it up to the firewall. Down here with all the new space I have. In addition to the tubing and filter, this also comes with this huge assortment of couplers. I've got uh, couplers, I've got straights, I've got downsizers, I've got upsizers, I've got it all. Now, this is my original coupler off of the throttle body, which I know to be, I'm almost positive it's a four inch coupler. Yep, which means I'm gonna be working in the four inches all the way up until I integrate with this, my airbox or my filter cone. What I'd like to do is bring the box into this area right here. My goal here is to run the air filter a 90 out, bring it along here and down into this region where I can get nice, clean, cool air. So my first measurement I'm going to need is how far from the air box. 24 inches is gonna get me right to this elbow roughly. So let's find 29, 24 inches within this piece that I have down here. That's gonna serve as my initial piece. I'm thinking it's gonna be this piece right here. I can cut it short if I need to, but this will also leave me with quite a little bit of uh, intake tube left over. 
It's designed with these nice little couplers, so you get an idea of where you're cutting, and I'm guessing you could use a sawzall, a cutoff wheel, a hacksaw, or whatever. But uh, because I am so cultured, I'm gonna use my bandsaw to make this first cut. So this kit is really slick. This took about maybe eight minutes of rough measuring and mocking up. Now it's not mounted. It's still, uh, still needs to be locked down. I've got to cut it and put the mass airflow in, but this is what I'm going for. See how I've got a nice clean air pocket right here. It's going to be pulling a lot of air, not from under here because I am going to have the whole wheel liner in here, but I'm going to punch out this hole right there, which will give me some good airflow. This is the bracket that mounts onto the cone itself that will then, with these plates that I'll bend up, will lock into place. So, yeah, really cool. I priced out doing something like this online by ordering a bunch of different elbows and straights and some aluminum tubing and C-clamps and uh, all hose clamps and all that kind of stuff. And it was prohibitively expensive. This guy isn't cheap at about 350 bucks, but it does get you everything you need. And what I'm particularly excited about is I could put some couplers in here and turn it into a cold air intake with a snorkel. So despite how big these trucks are, there, there's bigger water holes out there. And I would love to have my intake up and out of the way, high and dry. But we'll save that for another day. At this point, uh, it's time to start uh, fitting the mass airflow in and doing the wiring for that and bending up the bracket to make this guy fit. And I can check cold air intake off the system, off the list. I gotta do a little bit more research, but I'm pretty sure that my cold air intake is gonna get cut right here, which will allow me to splice in the mass airflow. I believe the mass airflow wants at least six inches of clean straight air, meaning it doesn't want to be behind, immediately be behind a elbow, as that leads to uh, poor readings. I did have some issues with poor mass airflow readings in the beginning and it took me a little bit of time to chase them down. So I'm going to put my mass airflow in the best position possible. Just need to figure out where that is. But with this kit, it's going to be really, really quick. Cut, slide it in, tighten down some hose clamps, burnouts. One of the many, many cool things about these trucks is the fact that they are everywhere. And it was made with good steel. So even though it's a 30 year old part, wire wheel, some elbow grease and some paint, and they'll look brand new again. This is the quarters that were off the truck and here's the liners. I haven't done a ton to them. I wire wheeled them, cleaned them up a little bit. Now I'm just gonna blast them. The wheel liners are in. I am stoked that these guys all mounted up. Bolts are all in. I gotta fix these two that tie it to the body. But I'm really happy on how that came out. The wheel liners don't just keep crap out of the engine bay. They also provide quite a bit of rigidity to the front end of the truck. They are the only thing that's tying the core support, the quarter, and the body together. And they are stiff and strong. And so I kind of view them as a necessity to keeping things tight and rattle free. So I always try and include them when I can in the build. Yeah, it's all in and back together. Wheel liners mounted well, battery trays in. Wiring, decently clean. You know what time it is now. It's time to pull it all apart again so I can paint these liners, finish up some last minute stuff. And get this thing ready for hammers. I made a list last night. It's all starting to blur. I made a list last night of what I have to do and uh, what I would like to do. So let's go through that in a minute and I'll show you where we stand. 
So here is the list to do. Let's just bang through this quickly and we can discuss exactly how I'm gonna tackle this remaining list. Well, the hood install, that shouldn't be too hard. I want a primer underneath it because it's still a little a bit uh, white. Drip tray in, bolt in all the cowl, put the wipers on, order some new windshield, move the air cut out on the core to the other side, uh, mount the cold air to the fender, done that. Uh, core and body mount, well, I gotta deal with that still. On my electrical, wiring cleanup or removal. That, that's referring to what I have going on under my dash. I got a bunch of wires that need to be removed and uh, just taken out of there. Uh, I need to mount the KC lights switch. I need to uh, tighten down all the bolts on the bus bar. I need to hook up my turn signals, secure the TPS and PCM that is now inside the cab, put in the battery and mount it, wire it up, and all the backup wiring to my uh, secondary battery. Put the winch contactor back together and mount that in. Uh, compressor, we're gonna pend that for now. Paint, which I got a lot of this done yesterday. Hood hardware, I've just gotta do that. The wheel liners got sprayed, I'll show you those in a second. Uh, the drip and sill tray, that got sprayed too. Uh, door jams, haven't done that. Battery tray, haven't done that. Front axle, haven't done that. Um, I need to build some trick tab power steering cooler mounts. The ones I put in were not gonna work. Ideally, I'd like to tie the frame to the cage. Uh, put the wrap on. I've got to finish the wrap on the doors, the door jams, the rears, maybe the center console if I have extra stuff left over. And then getting it back on the road, I've got to do a full flush on the engine coolant because I'm switching over to a waterless coolant. I got to bleed the brakes. I got to bleed the power steering. I've got to fill the radiator and engine and I've got to refill the transmission. And then I need to check all the hardware, all the suspension bolts, uh, set all my coil nuts and all my steering and transmission fittings. I still need to get some various uh, AN fittings, buy an extra turn signal because I lost one, buy a fresh thing of Lexan because my Lexan windshield is a disaster, and uh, get some solid body mounts. So, you know, not all that much to do, right? The wheel liners almost look brand new. Like I was saying, this is awesome how you can just polish these things down and blast them with some paint. I hit the inside with some steel it that's already dried and the outside I just hit with primer. I may throw some, uh, some rubber liner over this to see if I can dampen a little bit of the noise, eh, but I'm not too worried. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this week's video, I have tons more. Go check out this playlist up here. It will have build series from when I did the front four link conversion a few years ago. And click that subscribe button to keep updated on all Merrick's Garage news.